this is Mickey. Today we are going to cover the most popular masking that we have in Lightroom and that's sky masking. Now sky masking can be applied very easily, very quickly, but the burden of a sky mask is to get the edges of it clean so that when you make changes to the sky that you're not making changes to what it's butting up against or you're missing some of those changes that are kind of hidden in the border of the horizon. Now, depending on what type of photograph you're going to be uh, modifying, the mask cleanup might be a little different. But this method I'm going to show you today, whether it's landscape or architecture or landscape with mountains uh, or water, it seems to work pretty good with all these types. I've covered other methods to refine sky masks in prior videos and we'll probably cover more in the future. But this one I'm going to show you today is the, pretty much my go-to method to clean up a sky mask. So to start out here we're in Lightroom. We're looking at a scene, uh, kind of a gloomy day uh, in, in the, on the coast of Maine. And we want to make sure this sky reflects the gloominess that there was in that day. So it was, you could see the clouds more and it was a little more gray. So we want to clean up this sky. So we're going to go into Lightroom. We're going to click on our masking icon and we're going to select sky mask. And as you can see, it's done a pretty good job of uh, masking the sky. There's some areas though that it couldn't get and you can see that in the tree line. If we come over here to our masking window and click on those three dots and change our mask overlay mode, to white on black, we can see exactly where it has masked. Now white is white reveals, black conceals. White means 100% of the effect that we put on the sky is going to be applied in the white area. 0% is on the black area. And wherever you see shades of gray, different very percentages of changes will be applied to these areas. So while we darken the sky, these areas won't be darkened as much because they're not white, they're areas of gray. So our task is to get everything either white or black or closest to it that we can. All right, so let's go back to our cover color overlay and look at this. Now, to help clean this up, we're gonna do something that sounds kind of strange, but it really does work. So what we're going to do is we're actually gonna make two masks for the sky. We're gonna make one for the sky itself and we're gonna make another one for this area that the sky has problems with. So the first thing we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna make a mask for this area right here. We're gonna go up to subtract and we're gonna select sky. And what we're saying is that when we do this, it's going to select all the pure white areas that we saw in that other mask and it's gonna subtract it from the mask. So we'll do this. And now you can see we have the red overlay in these areas of the uh, mask that the sky couldn't get. And if we come over here to our three dots and look at white on black, you can see these were the areas of gray that we saw in our sky mask. We now have them masked. So now we can make changes to these at, uh, while we make changes to the sky. So let's go back to the cover uh, color overlay. And now we can darken this area just a little bit to start out with, because we're gonna have to manage both of these as we do our sky masking. All right, so we just turned down the exposure just a little bit, and you really can't see the changes because we haven't darkened the sky yet. So we're gonna go back and we're going to call this, we're gonna double click here, and we're gonna call this sky cleanup so we don't get our mas masks mixed up. Now we wanna create a new mask and we're gonna select sky. So here now you see that it was the same mask we had before, before we did the subtract, all right? And we're gonna call this sky mask. Sky, so now we have our sky and we have the sky cleanup. So now let's go to our sky and let's start making our changes. So let's bring this, the exposure down and let's bring the contrast up a little bit, bring the highlights down Maybe bring the shadows up just a little bit to give more definition to that front cloud. Add a little white in. We might bring it, bring the blue in to give it a little more gray, about like this. And we're going to give it a little clarity so the clouds have more definition, maybe a little texture. All right, so there's our sky. Now, if we start messing with the tones of our exposure slider, we can see those areas here that 
the sky mask couldn't get to. So now let's go to our sky cleanup mask and let's start bringing in the exposure here. See how we can darken those areas now? So the sky looks a little cleaner. Let's go back to our sky mask. Now let's bring the exposure up because we didn't want it that dark. I was just using it as an example. So at this point, we're just going to bounce back and forth between our sky mask and our sky cleanup till we have our horizon exactly like we want it. So let's go to the sky cleanup. And I'm going to bring the shadows down a little bit too. Bring the contrast up. So now if we look at our mask, we're going to use the little eyeball here, which turns both of these masks off at the same time. There's before, there's after, there's before, and there's after. And as you can see, we don't have these lightened areas in the tree line and in between the limbs and in between the tree trees that uh, is glowing. They now look, everything looks uniform. Now, at this point, you know, of course, you want to start working on this part, the foreground, and you could just grab the sky mask here and click on the three little dots and duplicate and invert, and that's going to give you a mask here that you can change exposure and clean it up. And that, that's for another day, another video. But I just wanted to get into place for you to see how we can clean up the sky and have a really good... Uh, horizon that's not glowing and looks very real for sky masking. I hope this helps out with your sky masking. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me an email and I'll help you out any way I can. Thanks and I'll talk to you soon.